Go. Wow, that was so <laughs> you're like on the off beat. Three, two, one. Go. <laughs> I'm feeling jazzy tonight. <laughs> that might be a little <laughs> off, but you know, you'll fix it in post. Yeah, it's a jazzy, it's a freeform jazz Tuesday edition. I love it. Welcome to Way Too Broad, a show and tell program for really, really ridiculously excited grown-ups. I'm Hannah, and that's Como, and these are my co-hosts, Aaron and Ben. Hi, Aaron. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Ben. Jesus. As loud wow. as I've ever heard him be. Same. Como, are you dying? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Just wow. like, let me live, Dad. <laughs> Jeez, I'm just yowling during your podcast. <laughs> oh my God. What is happening? The other day, Kylie and I were upstairs playing a video game together, and he fucking was downstairs asleep. Sometimes when we're both upstairs, when he wakes up, he freaks out because he doesn't know where we are, I think, is what's happening in his head. <laughs> and he just started screaming downstairs and then sprinted upstairs up here, like stopped, got slightly puffed in his tail, screamed, and then ran back downstairs. <laughs> oh my god. He's <laughs> weird. He's a weird cat. He's like a super- Strange animal. If anything, having, getting a second cat has made me realize that Como is a really fucking weird cat. <laughs> I love weird cats, though. Like, Same. If you're going to have a cat, have a weird cat. That's how yeah. I feel. Hard agree, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, my cats, one of them speaks English, and the other one is, like, so stupid. <laughs> so they're both weird. <laughs> wow. Love yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> um, cool. What, what are we drinking? Ben, what are you drinking? I have two drinks for everyone okay. today. I've got... For everyone? Nice- for me? Enough for everyone? Yep. For me? Yep. Oh shit! I forgot about physics. Um, <laughs> I have a iced key lime liqueur. Ooh! Um, oh wow! You really threw me there, Ben. Yeah. And I have you really threw me a, a half really tea, fancy. half lemon spindrift. Wow! For the first time, Ooh. well, I had it for the first time yesterday because my Target had there was only one box left because my Target, the fucking Target near me is always uh, understocked in like every aisle. And then, like, they'll have Too one day people. where they have a bunch of stuff, and then it's just, like, gone. Um, but, yeah, they had this for the first time ever. Yes. <laughs> mm, Whoa. Yummy. Oh, my God. And it's, was it key lime or tea? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually more mint chocolate chip Oreo. Gross. Than anything. God. It's so Gross. good. I don't know how either of you... Do you not like mint chocolate chip ice cream? No. I do. Yeah, it tastes like that. Every it literally, once like it's in a, a while. It's a combo with I Baskin know. Robbins. Like, it literally no, just tastes like the ice cream. that's disgusting. Every once in a while, I, like, really crave mint chocolate chip ice cream, but then all the other times I absolutely despise it. So, this is a weird thing about... For me, it's weird, Aaron, that you don't like mint chocolate in general. Yeah, that's very mm-hmm. strange. Chocolate the other. I hate it. That's, yeah, that is weird I know. Me. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> but uh, here's the thing about a mint chocolate chip Oreo. Like, Ugh. the whole outside is made of chocolate chips, basically. It's it like doesn't what, really have chocolate it's like chips better. in it. It's more, it's, it's the, more mint chocolate. It's just like called that because it's based on the, on the, yeah. cause, it's, cause it's based on the chocolate, the fucking ice cream flavor. That's, the only, that's why it's called that. Don't talk I don't to like me about it. That. And it has like don't little, like, it has it has two layers of cream, one that's chocolate and one that's the mint, and the mint one has like little bits of chocolate in it, but you don't like you, there's no texture to them. The chocolate layer is superfluous because the the chocolate cookies on Oreos are like the best chocolate flavor around. Let's I mean, get these guys on the phone. I mean, I like like <laughs> double chocolate Oreos too, like with chocolate filling. No. I think that's good. Give me a classic Oreo. The, the wildest I'll go is l- double stuff. Double stuff no, is you know, the default. No, I don't like the double stuff. Oh. I like those Oreo thins. Those Oreo thins are very good, and they they're the pist- very good. The pistachio flavor is out of this world. Get out no of here! Way. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. 
<laughs> no way. Yeah. I just don't – I just feel like I'm being manipulated. I know I'm being manipulated into buying more Oreos with all these flavors. I, I mean, know, the first true. one was perfect. It works on me every time, I though, because I like trying all the new ones. And Yeah. And my, You're actually, th- a fucking sucker. I think that my favorite one, other than probably mint chocolate chip, has been carrot cake, weirdly. Gross. Uh, no, it's Gross. super fucking good. I feel like <sighs> the frosting is cream cheese frosting flavored. Okay, I can't get behind that. I just want to call it cream cheese Oreo. Well, and it's basically um, <laughs> the thing is, it's still vegan. I don't know how they did. Like, it tastes just like cream uh. cheese frosting, but it is still vegan. Uh, and the carrot cake cookie basically just tastes like cinnamon. So it's like huh. cinnamon and cream cheese frosting. It's dope as hell. Did I tell you about one of the big arguments Molly and I had around Oreos? No, no. We were in the grocery store. And early, in early days, these were early days, and I see a big display of Oreos, and that's how I, that's how I am. Those, those work on me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. okay, don't mind if I do. And mm-hmm. I get a pack of Oreos, and Molly takes it out of the cart and puts it back and gets double stuffed. Agreed. Uh-huh. Thinking, correct. Thinking the that correct it's just like, okay, do. oh, whoops, you grabbed the wrong one, or maybe hundred <laughs> percent, hundred percent in Molly's camp already. I don't like I don't like the double stuff. I don't I don't I'm like I'm sorry them. but that's incorrect. <laughs> I don't like I appreciate the original ratio. So kill me. I honestly So I get like Did I get, you like, say so kill me? So kill me. So I get really <laughs> so upset. So kill me. So kill me. So I get really upset when we're like walking around in, like stony silence and she oh, no. realizes something's wrong. She's like Oh my god, what's wrong? And I was like, I don't like double stuff. <laughs> and she's like, but it's just like the regular one, except yeah. more cream. What's th- what's wrong? She's like, Ben, <laughs> Ben will back me up here. Yeah, no, ben I and totally you I've never met. I don't even know you have a cousin named Ben. He's gonna get my back. <laughs> but then we realized that we could just buy both. Yeah. And then we do. <laughs> True. And that's pretty much sums up when how our relationship is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just get both. I honestly... What, that's a beautiful engagement story. Well, and, and this is more so because I know Kylie likes, like doesn't even like the regular Oreos and only likes double stuff, basically. Is if, like, she grabbed the regular Oreos, I would assume it was a mistake. And I think I would assume that for most people. No. <laughs> like, and, no, and I don't... I agree. It's too sweet. I don't I think it is. I would eat just the cookie. I don't think it is. I would is. eat just the cookie. I'll say it. So kill me. <laughs> yeah, so kill me. I would eat just the cookie. Is that not a saying? Okay, can I, I, am I, I don't, really? I don't think it is. <laughs> so kill how do you, me. How do you? <laughs> it's really, sue me. It's so sure? sue what me. What am I thinking of? Sue me. So, 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 sue me. So oh. kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so kill me. Are you sure? How do you, okay. do you eat your Oreos for like taking them apart and eating them one half, one half at a time? No. Or do you just like bite yeah. the whole thing? I do both. I do, I, I, al- I always have milk. I sun- okay, yeah. D- d- Dunkin' in milk. See, I, I think if you if if you eat Oreos like exclusively, like take them apart and then eat each half, I agree that double stuff can be too much. But I think when it's both cookies, I think the ratio is just right with double stuff. I think there's not, not enough cream with the regular. It's not. It's simply <laughs> not. listeners call in right now. Call in live. We'll put out. Tell us. <laughs> let us know. One eight hundred oh four twenty. That's our phone number. Or- I guarantee the best-selling flavor of Oreos is the original oh, I, and not the oh, double stuff. I guarantee you it's double stuff. I fucking guarantee. Oh, fucking I really it. want this data. Can so we, kill it's me. <laughs> Oreo sales data. I okay, wish, Ben's going to look that up I for us. I was certain. To, uh, am I just really? That's not, that's not a phrase. No, it's not a phrase. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, I am the type of Oreo eater who um, j- usually just puts an entire one in my mouth at once when I eat it. I don't even bite it usually. I just eat it like in one. <laughs> I, you don't, you just swallow it whole. <laughs> <laughs> I just open my jaw I, wide and eat the whole package. Yeah. And I pinch my jaw like a snake. Has it never come up that I'm a human sized snake? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it hasn't, but a lot of things are clicking. <laughs> but I'm vegan, so I eat a lot of Oreos. <laughs> um, but for that reason, I think that the, like, I like the thin ones and I like the regular ones and I like the thick ones. I just appreciate all of it in my mouth. <laughs> I mean, the deal is, like, Molly will often just buy Oreos, so we have a lot of double stuff in the house, and I'll eat them, but I won't be as enthused about it. I'll be like, I wish this were regular or a thin. Mm. 
But I didn't buy it, so she's just sharing her Oreos with me, so I'm grateful. But not as grateful as I could be. Right. Well, while Ben is still looking this up, Erin, would you like to tell us what you're drinking? And me first? I thought Ben first. Ben w- oh, was Ben already first. went. That whole time was. That's oh, right. wow. That <laughs> was all me? shit. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, but Ben's been oddly silent over there when my first Google hit returned that the original <laughs> is the best-selling flavor of How, all What did time, you Google so. for that? Well, of all time. Best-selling a- Oreo flavors. Of all time or yearly? Because oh, the ones existed for 50 Oreo years flavors. longer, so that's not really fair to compare of all, all t- time. So, of all time. That's why I guaranteed it. <laughs> Read the fine print. Don't kill me. <laughs> Aaron, what are you okay, drinking? Okay, okay, okay. I'm drinking a berry seltzer. Oh, interesting. And, and you know I'm drinking it in my Yeti Coldster. <laughs> nice. I am so excited about that. Are you buy? Did you buy one? No, I didn't. But I just really like them a lot. I like the idea of them. <laughs> like, what, no, you, no. what is it that you're excited Here's the about? thing. Here's the thing. Is I'm very what poor. I have specifically? no. I have no money. I just. I really like. Like when you showed them to us last week, I there. I think I, I just love things that work really well at the one thing they're supposed to do. That just really makes me happy. And like when I told Kylie about them, how excited I was about the thing you told us about. I was like, she was like, what? So it like keeps it cold. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't, she didn't. It's freaking self. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> it's, it it's great. Yeah, I was actually listening to the pod and was delighted at that. I didn't quite notice it, but you were just like so fucking excited. I about still it. am. <laughs> you were just like, you were just like, oh my god, yes! Like, <laughs> like, oh, calm down. It's exciting. I no, I am on that level with you, Ben. I really am. Good. Aaron, did you did you appreciate? Did, did, so I know that you heard that I left in the part where you said you were going to the bathroom. But yeah. Did you appreciate why? I did. I did. That was a really good bit. I was at first. I was like, "Oh my god!" And then all that stuff was going on, and Molly was like, "What is going on?" I was like, "Oh, I I know why she kept this in. I, it was very good. It was tasteful edit. You did a great. You did great. You had a great edit. Thank you. Um. So, would you like to know what I'm drinking? Oh, I'm not done with what I'm drinking. Oh, okay. What else do you have? I have a decaf so no. coffee with a Stroop waffle on top. I'm piling up my oh, Stroop waffles. Yay! Thanks, App Signal. I got them the Thank day you. after we recorded last week. I knew it would happen. Yeah, so I have that going for me. What are you drinking, Hannah? I have two drinks. I have my Soda Stream. I already opened it a second ago. Hang on, TIB. You um. Okay. I want like a seltzer version of like sh- shot your wad. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I did. And I have a wonderful Costin Press ginger beer, fiery root ginger blended with crisp apples, distinctly dry. Wow. Which, yeah, which we, this, this brand we've only ever seen at our local liquor store. They make like a rhubarb one mm, cool. and like something else, but they're, they just like, they sell them as mixers, but they're so good. So, I haven't had the ginger flavor, though. There's a really good um, rhubarb uh, one. And I think there's another flavor we like. Oh, there's one that's a like a, um elderflower, lem- mm. uh, elderflower lemonade thing. Wow, like that our sounds wedding delicious. Drink. Yeah. Yum. Ooh, that's nice. Ah, could be more gingery. That's how I always feel. Yeah, same. Yeah. I just don't feel like there's going to be a day. Oh, no, I lost Mr. Waffle in my coffee. Oh, it's completely submerged. <laughs> Oh no! I was like, if I make it soggy enough, I can eat it stealthy, like on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that really was. I just a shit. don't. I just don't feel like there's going to be a day where I'm going to sip a ginger beer and think this is gingery enough or this is too gingery. I just don't feel like it will ever yeah. happen. I agree. Well, we found something we agree on, so that's good. <laughs> there we go. Be <laughs> peace at last, Aaron. You are 100 yeah. percent correct. Normal Oreos have sold a lot more than double stuff. Wait, I thought you said 100% incorrect. No, I said correct. Oh, great. In, oh, good. Well, in 2017, uh, regular Oreo sales were $710 million, and the next most was double stuff with $268 million. I mean, if wow, you think about it, Wow, that's a lot too, of fucking money. But if you think about it, like, it really is. <laughs> I mean, like, all the things that Oreos are in, I wonder if they count that, you know? Like, 
Oreos sold in bulk to ice cream stores oh. to crush them hmm. for toppings hmm. and things like Probably. that. Like that's gonna get you. That's gonna get you ahead. You know. That's gonna get. Who you. knows? Which I definitely thought of when I made my oh, yeah. claim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, I, I mean, considered thinking, all of these facts. I, I went with my heart. You went with your head. Mm-hmm. And it paid off. So kill me. <laughs> <laughs> So, y'all, did you hear about the tornadoes today on Cape Cod? Yeah, yeah, I did. yeah from you. Yeah. Climate change is a it was, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was really scary because, like, there was at least one tornado. At one point, I heard there were two, but I don't know if that. I thought I heard true. the same one touchdown in Yarmouth and Harwich. Yeah. And then it, like, oh. <clears throat> it, like, went, like, swoop, like, right past where Ian and his parents were. Oh, oh no. Wow. Yeah, like oh god. Like um like there was a church um just down the street from where they were at his like dad's like workshop that uh was uh damaged. There mm. the like steeple on the top of it was like bent over. Wow. Oh, shit. He sent me a picture of it. And uh also there was a like a motel in Harwich or something that the roof just completely came like flew off of yeah, i mean geez. the wind was crazy man tornadoes are so scary yeah i mean that like i was saying to ian like the they it seems like i've never been around a tornado before <clears throat> it seems like it they can do as much damage of a hurt as a hurricane but just in like a much smaller swath but you get no warning like almost no warning compared mm-hmm. to a hurricane like with a hurricane you know it's coming for like right. weeks you're like tracking it yeah you get like a tornado wor- warning that's like take cover immediately yeah and then you're like yeah. fuck yeah so that was pretty crazy that's crazy yeah we got um maybe a couple months ago some tornado warnings it was like early in the morning our phones went off it was like tornado spotted in your area seek co- shelter immediately and we were like oh my god let's go to your, like a room in our house with no windows and that's when we realized we have no room in our house wow, at all really? with no windows not a single one that's crazy so we went into like basically like our hall closet was is like very narrow but like that space is like the closest thing further uh, furthest away from a window yeah oh like by your front door yeah yeah kind of in that alcove mm-hmm. so yeah that's but- it Excuse me, but that was that was funny just to like okay think through my house like where are there no windows nowhere. <laughs> hmm. I don't think you can blame yourself for that. Mm-mm. I think you can and you should. Yeah, I did. I did that day. We our house got um, sucked up by a tornado and uh, we all died. So oh, no. <laughs> that was so fault. kill me. <laughs> That's why I'm allowing you to kill me at uh, every turn. <laughs> <laughs> Any other upfront stuff? All I had was tornado. <laughs> <laughs> Twister. I got nothing. I got nothing for you. I I, I don't think I don't uh, I don't uh, think so. I don't know. I don't think so. I uh, just really don't think so. I, I, I ate I my strip bobble. It was <laughs> amazing. I think I did, but I don't remember it. So our our strip my strip waffle delivery came. On Saturday, which was the same day, was hosting. We had a lot of family in town. A lot of our family shout outs to all of them. Mm. And I was able to serve Stroop for dessert, and everybody freaking loved them. Hell yeah. Yeah. Our little cousin, um, Tristan, who's, how old is he? Six or seven? Anyway, he was, was gonna say running five, up to I this. I think I'm wrong. Yeah, I think you are. He was <laughs> running up to the Stroop waffle box. And grabbing one, and I was like, hey, ask your mom and dad if you can have a second one. And they were standing right there, and he was like, hey, can I have a second, actually a third? (laughs) 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 Wow. I like him. Yeah, he's really sweet. Very honest. Um (laughs) Actually, I my know third. what I was gonna say. What? <laughs> Second, actually, third. It was my birthday on Sunday. Oh, it freaking was. Happy it was. birthday. You know. Yeah, uh, thirty-one. How's thirty-one, 31 feel? Now, Do you feel flirty-one? Thirty-one feels great. Yeah, I'm ready for thirty-one. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready so. for you to be thirty-one. <laughs> <laughs> so that so that was fun. We went to. 
mom and dad's house and dad made us um some really delicious um vegetable dishes from a cookbook that we now also own mm. um and it was really it was quite hot but it was really nice not the food the food was delicious the it was temperature served cold. Was it was hot. it was it was ice cold it was gazpacho. some of it was ice cold there was like this really interesting icy thing that mom made that had like um cucumber and like mint and lime i think oh and then it like it was like crushed up in ice and served like a palate cleanser in between courses. Wow, that's freaking fancy as frick. Yeah, and Ian made a cherry cobbler, which we just Yum. had more of tonight. It was so good. Earlier in your uh, 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 earlier you said I'm vegan, which I thought was a joke that you were <sighs> a vegan human snake. Is that true? Oh no. I'm okay, not vegan. I didn't know if you were like going vegan or something and neglect to <laughs> tell us. No, I was saying that because of Oreos. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> but then you mentioned specifically a vegetarian dinner or vegetables. And I was like, why would she be eating vegetables if she wasn't a vegan? <laughs> like, no one would have a motivation to. You know, I actually think that's part of the point of this book. I haven't, like, really looked, like, read through it yet, but. What called? Um, vegetables it's called Unleashed. Veg- yeah, that. <laughs> That's actually really? what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, how did you know that, Ben? Because <laughs> she, mom, mama sent it to us earlier, or sent a Not picture of it to Federica. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's it's a veg it's a a book a cookbook about vegetables written by a carnivore like a guy or omnivore or whatever like a guy that eats meat and it's not they're not all vegan recipes but um they're pretty much all vegetarian recipes I think. Mm. Um, but he just wanted to, he just did, wanted to write a cookbook about vegetables, cause just like an appreciation cookbook about mm. vegetables and all the things you can do with them, which I've always felt that way about vegetables. Yeah, My I philosophy vegetables. is very aligned with him. And also it's the guy, do you remember his name, Ben? Jose Andres. Yeah. The guy who went to Puerto Rico and like fed millions of people hot meals after the, oh. after Hurricane Maria. So he's a cool dude. Amazing. Are the vegetables unleashed cause they're free range? <laughs> <laughs> And I don't think it's like a foraging <laughs> cookbook. Yeah. We do have okay. some some foraging books, like more more than you would expect an average person to have. I mean, but probably just as many as I would expect a pilgrim to have. Yeah, a, a, a former pilgrim. Mm-hmm. That's a probably true. A reformed pilgrim. How dare you presume none of the foraging books are mine? Are th- any? No. <laughs> 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 I'm just looking at this book. He's sniffing a beet. Is that right? I don't know. He's got a it's carrot. He's beat, got a carrot up his nose. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not a beet. It's like up his nose. No, yeah. no offense, <laughs> to Jose. Yeah, that's that's the right one. Cool. I just searched it, but I spelled it vegetables <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> vegetables. vegetables misspelled. Vegetables unleashed. Um, neat. Should we pop in? Let's pop. Let's poop in. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Be right back. <laughs> JK, I'll do it here. <laughs> um, Ben is first this week. Oh boy, I don't have much oh. to be honest with you. <laughs> I've been a. It's been a busy time for Ben. Um, <laughs> the you only doing busy Ben. What are you doing, Ben? I had to. I have to submit. I had to submit a paper to a conference last week, and so I was wow. rushing to get that done. Are you going to speak at a important. conference? If it gets in, was it a C freaking FP? What does that mean? Call for proposal. Call for, proposal. Call for papers. Uh, that's probably what it is. Yeah, it's a it, there's, cool. there's a call for papers. Call for papers. Call for papers. Like I knew what I was talking about right up until the very end there. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i haven't been i haven't really had a big obsession the, the it's just a small thing did you guys see the la times article about the damage from the earthquakes no i'm gonna send you it said, to you right now you said that whole sentence weird though <laughs> la ter- terms article about the earth Earthquake. It's just my accent, Aaron. I don't need you to make sorry. fun of me. I'm really making fun of you. No, I didn't see it. Is that your California? It, ben? it has before and after pictures uh, put into like a GIF of the fault Ooh. line after the 7.1 earthquake, and it is fucking wild. Wow. There are a, there are a bunch of them. 
and you can like see the total displacement of the wow. earth. Wow. There's one where there's a a, a um this is wow. this is great for a Whoa. podcast because this is entirely visual. <laughs> but like you can like literally see I mean obviously we'll link this article oh my if God. We post, but like you can literally see like a giant crack in the ground and you can see the, yeah. the fucking earth moving. It's insane. In one of the pictures, there's a pipeline that was straddling the vault and got broken open and is just staining the earth. Wow. And there's also... Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Um, It's just... It's so cool. I, like, I can watch these GIFs forever. Like, each one of them. I can just watch for so long. You can't watch all of them forever. <sighs> this isn't, like, a matter of, like, seconds? Like, this is, like, like, 30 seconds. Holy moly. That last picture of the fucking road displaced by eight feet. Wow. It's crazy. Speaking of natural disasters, shit is wild. This one's not from global warming, though. No, it's not. I was about to ask that. That's just what the earth moves. That's just what it's doing. Whoa. It's it's like you get older and it's like earth wrinkles. Basically. (laughs) It's like earth crow's feet. I mean, do you guys have you heard about the big one that people talk about? Have you heard anything I've heard about the expression. that? Expression. Do you know what that's no. all about? Apparently, like basically, the San Andreas Fault is like kind of supposed to like I don't know the term. I don't know any of the like geological terminology, but I think it basically like, every hundred or so years, faults tend to like kind of do a big shift. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know, like, the details of it. I think it just has to do with, like, tectonic plates moving, and they just, like, that's kind of the, usually the timeline of it, and that corresponds to, like, a really big earthquake. But the San Andreas Fault hasn't had, hasn't, like, had that shift in, like, I think almost 300 years. Mm. So we're, like, apparently, like, super due for a giant earthquake this wasn't along big the San Andreas Fault. I mean, Ben, you need to move. I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> ben, that was, Ben, that was my bit. I think you knew it. I think you knew it. It's common sense. <laughs> ben, get out of there. Move back to Boston. We're Planning on where there are tornadoes and flooding. Yeah. Yeah. Move back here where it'll flood. <laughs> wow. Fault lines. I gotta read up on fault lines. <laughs> yeah, right? So I can not so live near any of them ever. So much research I have to do. Gotta read up. <laughs> oh, they're just um, so cool. Wow. What? I'm just gonna... I mean, the what should fucking we call this surface obsession? of the earth moved. Call it Ridge that. Crest earthquake. Like, how it. deep does that go, Ben? I don't know. Like... All the way to the president. Like to, the, to the it goes to Joe Biden. <laughs> wow. Yeah, know. like it like goes it, down it, to it the came... lava. To the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does it? I don't know. I truly I don't. gotta read up on falling. I think that like I mean they're like where tectonic plates meet basically right that's my understanding mm. of them. I know there's so, like multiple types. So there's like the kind that are like slip across each other like this and and the more visual stuff and then there's the kind that go like this <laughs> they like overlap overlap yeah. one and hand on like top slide of slide over other. each other there's some that slide yeah. along each other one one hand yeah one hand's next to one hand and then one <laughs> hand above one hand and then this is this an kind, for the listener the thank you the this kind where the hand goes over the other hand mm-hmm. can cause these great big like cracks and really like more like dramatic destruction sort of but then well, these ones, they, they rub they, next to each other hands, rub next to each other hands. They're kind of like more like they just are rumbly forever. And then I also think that's the what kind the of thing that you fault see, is. Yeah. The, a lot, I think a lot of the ones in California are, are the rub hands side by side kind. Well, yeah, it's all, it's all the San Andreas fault in California. It's one big fault. Wow. That goes, by the way. It goes right fucking through the middle of San Francisco. Did you know that? No. Like literally right under San Francisco. Oh my god. It's crazy. There's a So the there's video of from I think it's from like the forties of a giant earthquake destroying Candlestick Park during a Giants baseball game. Whoa. Uh-huh. Earthquakes are crazy. Move. Yeah. You have to move. <laughs> you have to move. 
I experienced a very wait, wait, small wait, earthquake once in Durham. Did you? Yeah, I thought. I thought like the closet was like shaking, and I thought. Wait, just, like, where was it? This was in Durham. It was just like we got an earthquake, which we like never get earthquakes. Really? And yeah, and like the door was like rattling, and I thought like there was a truck or something. You know, I thought like something outside the house was being, you know, vibrate-y. Mm. When and what turns out that was true. <laughs> <laughs> outside below. <laughs> below. So many burps. Why do you drink so many bubbly drinks on this p- program? <clears throat> okay, so just th- just this says fall line is where the three-dimensional fault, which is a fault is a three-dimensional surface within the planet Earth. <laughs> That's c- uh, good to specify. <laughs> <laughs> and a fault line is where the three-dimensional fault intersects the Earth's surface. Okay. Is that helpful? What? No. No. Me neither. No. <laughs> Does it have the hands diagram? Is it like the Earth is a puzzle and fall mm. lines are where the puzzle pieces kind of cl- connect into place? Yeah, basically. Okay, okay. There's like tectonic plates and those are – the fault lines are the edges between the plates. And the plates are what we're sitting on, like this chair. What about the – is the plate a fault? No, the faults are between – or like at the edges of the plates, like where the plates oh, – okay intersect touch. or touch oh, yeah okay okay basically is that okay. right then you're the expert okay. Okay. exactly right i don't know Thank i wasn't you. listening i was trying to find something okay is it relevant yeah should we wait no, then or should we pop it's it fine because i God, would whatever i would love to spend some time not talking about natural disasters yeah, on fine. our podcast yeah we're, wow. I'm okay done. get this, out of here this segment's gonna need some heavy heavy editing as we editing. take out all of our uh research about falling reading up on fault lines i think it's educational yeah but there's a lot of like pausing for like research oh yeah it'll be fine research silence all right i'm done <laughs> all right wow that was terrifying thrilling. <laughs> great scary segment ben you're welcome national disasters hey at least it's not us fucking things up for once yeah, that one for freaking once oh <laughs> nice ben oh my god Aaron. that was entirely by accident <laughs> wait what i said it's not our fault that's all you said yeah yeah but it was a joke because okay. we were just talking not, about false. You're still not getting it? Uh, <laughs> oh my friggin' god. Uh, uh, Are we running a comedy podcast or what? <laughs> 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 but I'm... Ch- <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, what's your obsession? Hi. My obsession is a podcast oh. that none of you have heard about. It's oh. called Conan O'Brien Meets the World. <laughs> oh, shit. Is this a first? <laughs> I think this is a first. Uh, well, no, it's not a first. It's I I just, like, don't have another obsession because we recorded last on Friday, and since then I've only been listening to this <laughs> podcast and uh, hosting our, or being with our family. So it really just me saying that I don't have an obsession and it's mostly due to Conan and Brian needs a friend, <laughs> which is just such a funny fucking podcast. It's so good. It's, it's so good. I've listened to so many episodes and I've loved them all. I wanted to say another thing. I'm not going to like redo a whole thing. I just was going to point out some stuff that I loved that Ben didn't mention. And stupid. yeah, which is stupid. I'll <laughs> re up that the Lisa Kudra episode is a must listen. It's so sweet. They're just best of friends. Yeah, they just they just love each other. They mm-hmm. love each other and tell each other, which is so great. Um I really liked uh I like how they have the Conan O'Brien pays off the mortgage on his beach house segment. Mm-hmm. Which most of the time contains nothing. They're like, this is the yeah. Conan O'Brien pays off his beach house segment. And then he'll talk about how he, he bought a beach house and what a bad decision that was and how he <laughs> needs to pay the mortgage off. And then it'll just go right back into the interview. When, when they first released the episodes, that had ads in it. 
Oh really? They've oh. like I don't I guess they like re uploaded them without ads made. I don't know what it is, but they like oh. definitely that was used to be the ad segment, but now like yeah, it just says like Kona Ryan Payload's Beach House. <laughs> and then just like talk for a minute <laughs> and then go back. <laughs> it's really it's really Wait. funny. I had a suspicion that it might have previously contained ads, but I find it really humorous without mm-hmm. them. Yeah, because sure. it's just like it's just like they take a random break for him to just like babble about how what a bad idea it was for him to buy a beach house. Did, and is then, it different in every episode? The mm-hmm. stuff he says. So did yeah. he record ads and then later record like other filler segments for every episode? I don't Probably know. the other way around, right? Is he talking to the guest when he's when he's no. talking no. to the- Wow. No, and it might have contained both before. I think oh, I think maybe. what it used to be was there was that little filler thing and then it went into the ads. Yeah. Oh, okay. But now it's just a filler thing about like Yeah, I got this beach house. <laughs> 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 and then it's like, and we're back. <laughs> uh it's really good. I love it. I really love it. What's, I haven't listened to it. What's your favorite it? app? My favorite app, I think the funniest app, and probably my favorite, was the Tignataro episode. Yeah, I was definitely so, laughing out loud the most at that one. Yeah, I was, like, oh, in the well, kitchen, like, like, cleaning and just, like, fucking <laughs> dying. And Molly, like, came in at one point to, like, look at me. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know you were downstairs. It's so good. Um, I loved all of them. You know, it's, it's like, the thing that we talk about, like, all of the comedy stuff that we've talked about that we love, like, the Hannah Gatsby stuff mm-hmm. and Tignataro's stuff. It's just, like, that intersection of, like, extremely funny and also, like, really emotionally intelligent and also um, has that emotional depth to it that mm-hmm. I just, like, can't do without now in my comedy. And so. you know what's actually one of the things I totally forgot to mention when I was talking about it last week was um that... Something Conan O'Brien brings up a lot in all of these interviews, which I really appreciate, is how he's, like, actively trying to dispel the myth that, like, good art requires suffering. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, like, that's something he believed for a long time and was, like, depressed for a long time and kind of refused to go to therapy or get help because he felt like that's what made him funny and, like, drove his comedy. And then he was like, you know what, I don't want to feel this way anymore. And, like, went to therapy and, and wants other people to realize that, like, you don't need to feel that way to be funny or to make good art mm-hmm. in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I think is super healthy, a super healthy message to get out to people. Yeah, agree. And and what Hannah Gatsby's on about also. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And they talk, they have a good discussion about that, too. Yeah. Um, have you listened to any of them, Hannah? No. And, you know, I, I had not mentioned this last week, but I, um... I typically don't really like interview style podcasts like mm. at all. I haven't listened to I haven't listened to any since probably way back in the day I used to listen to You Made It Weird with this actually like I always had mixed feelings about it but for some reason I I, I listened I, Do you either of you know what that is? That's Pete Holmes's, right? Yeah. And and what I appreciated about it was were some of the same things that it sounds like this podcast does where they, they, he really would like make an effort to go deep with people. And he had like certain um, sort of topics that he always wanted to cover with them and, and would, and people would like, he had a way enough of a sort of way about him. Like basically he would open up so much himself that people would feel compelled to open up back to him. And I Mm -hmm. heard some really great discussions on there, but like Pete Holmes ultimately <laughs> to me, sorry Pete, if you hear this, which you won't, is kind of annoying. Like he's he. I have kind of like he has he has an episode of Conan O'Brien's podcast. I haven't listened to it yet because I don't really care about Pete Holmes. He's like he's just like a lot. He's like a lot all the time. It's kind of how I feel about Pete Holmes. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah. and Conan can I, I've always but like I never actively seek out Conan stuff. But every time that I do, I find him to be like so sublimely like charming and and mm-hmm. and good at what he does and like always surprisingly funny. Like always funnier than I expect him to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. So I think now that I've heard from both of you about it, I will probably listen to some episodes this week. I would start. Hannah, just with the Ting No Tar episode, yeah, it's, it's it's really good, and it, there's just something so charming about it. Like charming was a great word that you used. Like his humor is so good. the The tone of the podcast is so relaxed. Like it's mm. not awkward. They're like they already love each other. Like the people mm. that he's in. Inter- oh, the Wanda Sykes episode is really fucking funny too. <laughs> I haven't listened to that but- one yet. Oh, it's really good. But they they just, like, all really love each other and are so comfortable and just have this, like, the pace of it is so 
delicious and they're all just like so funny and okay. uh work off of each other really well i think you're gonna really like it and the tignazaro one's just like unbelievable <laughs> yeah. it's so- and the david sedaris one's really funny too um yeah he's a weird dude and that was that was very funny <laughs> The season uh, finale do- came out this week, and it's oh, Julia yeah. Louis Dreyfus. It's it's uh, delightful. Julie Lulu. Julia Julie Lulu, as she's known it's by star- everyone. It's, it starts. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with her struggling to say her own name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and like the sound quality is really good. I know that's a weird thing to call out, but it's. <laughs> It's yeah, it's a, like it's, it's well produced. It's well produced. I I will say, Ben, I don't know how I like stop listening to it as soon as the interview is over. There's like always some extra stuff at the end, like maybe ten minutes of extra stuff at the end. I never listen to that stuff. What is that? I do, and it's, it's been like worth it. Voicemails. Some of some of it's really funny. Voicemails from who? Listeners. You listeners. Hmm. Yeah, anybody. we could leave yeah. them voicemails. Then they would, could leave us voicemails. Wow, that's a great idea. <laughs> but the season's wow. over. Damn, so what a good idea! Thought, <laughs> wow, should have thought of that earlier. God damn it, Ben! Why didn't you bring it till wow. last week? Wow, <laughs> I wasn't obsessed wow. until last week. You ding ding yeah. dong, you freaking ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm done. Cool. Conan O'Brien needs a friend again. Again. <laughs> Conan O'Brien but still yeah. needs a friend. <laughs> Here's what happened. I was like, oh, I'll just listen to one. And then it was awesome. And then I kept listening. It's just snowballed. Yeah. This is not unheard of because I feel like the first time you brought B. Studwell, I brought her the next week. Yep. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Oh, you're true. Uh, you're true. You're thank true. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know that's not the first time because B was the first time. I don't That's love right. Conan O'Brien needs a friend as much as I love B. Said, well, let's get that very clear. <laughs> let's get that very clear. <laughs> let's get that crystal fucking clear. <laughs> <laughs> we might have done that with Janelle Monet early on, too, actually. Yeah, we might have all cycled through Janelle Monet. She's great. Didn't we have a week where we just too. all brought her when uh, Dirty Computer came out? Is that true? Yeah. Dirty um, I don't know if we... It might have just been a long up front, but I was just listening <laughs> to that album today. <laughs> <laughs> ah! it's good it's good stuff do you guys want to know what my obsession is please please god tell me please <laughs> i'm dying you can hear it to know i have <laughs> you can hear it to know <laughs> i know i knew what you meant but I yeah know. yeah i uh-huh <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> so kill me. All right, tell me. <laughs> the best part about that, the only reason I'm continuing to do that is you both are like surprised and delighted by I it. I love it. <laughs> I want to start saying it. <laughs> you can. You just have to start. Oh, thanks. So kill me. <laughs> I have your permission. So extreme. So, so kill me. I feel like. I feel like. Why do I feel like that's a thing? Okay. <laughs> what is it, Hannah? Uh, it's a Netflix television show. Internet television. Oh. You know about internet television? <laughs> <laughs> I hear it's going to be big. Yeah. It's <laughs> important stuff. Um, it's, a, it's a show called In the Dark. Have you oh. heard of it? No. Okay. Is it scary? Can I Google it? No, it's not scary. It's a, it's, well, it's like a, it's like a mystery. There's a mystery in it, but it's about, um, a blind woman named Murphy who has a lot of vices. Murphy Brown? No. Is it a Murphy Brown spinoff? Murphy something else. I don't remember. And she has a really nice guide dog named Waffle that she doesn't, oh. she, she doesn't, not, sorry, not Waffle, Pretzel, which is even better. <laughs> I like that. Let down. <laughs> Um, uh, that, uh, she doesn't like, um, her, her relationship with the dog develops over time, but okay. So her name is Murphy. She's kind of a bitch. She's blind. Murphy Mason. Um, she, yeah. Murphy Mason. She doesn't really like most people. Um, her parents, uh, own a guide dog, like training facility 
that they started in order to help their own daughter and also for her to have a job because she couldn't hold one down, not necessarily because she was blind, but just because she's like a pain in the ass. And mm-hmm. so they basically like pay her to work there and, and not do anything. And um, so she also, because of this, has this guide dog, but she doesn't really like y- like to use the guide. It's not that she doesn't like, um, I keep wanting to call him waffle pretzel, but but she doesn't like like <laughs> to use him. I think it's like more of a resentment thing towards her parents mm-hmm. than anything about the dog. That he's um, not named waffle. Yeah. Um. I know. Uh, well, I know of a a golden retriever named Waffle. That's why I keep doing that. Oh, okay. Um. But. So don't worry, there is one that exists. Um, <laughs> okay, thank <good>. God. <laughs> is worrying. there one named Stroop Waffle though? <gasps> I want to name a dog Stroop Waffle. <laughs> what if his like first name was Stroop and his oh, middle name was Waffle oh, and his last name was Brown? <laughs> Stroop Waffle Brown. <laughs> oh, come on, can I rename you Stroop Waffle? <laughs> Love it. Uh, uh, I mean, neither of your. Cats really have the right coloring. I mean, Jack would actually make a better Stroop Waffle. Yes, Jack, Jack would make <laughs> you a very good Stroop Waffle. Stroop waffle? <laughs> you want a very good Stroop Waffle. Uh, let's ask the Stroop Waffle company if they'll sponsor you <laughs> renaming your cat with okay. free Stroop Waffle for life. Okay, continue, Pretzel. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so, yeah, she's got all these vices. She's very difficult. She has a best friend who's also her roommate who helps her a lot. And she also um, has a really close friend who is actually like a drug dealer who hangs out in the alley behind her apartment building. She lives in um, Chicago, but um, they are just really, really good friends. They have this like warm relationship. He's like this young um, black dude. And at one point, uh, I don't think this is really a spoiler because it's like, within the first episode you find out that the way they became friends was that she uh was being mugged um by someone else some stranger and um this kid came up and basically like saved her life and brought her to the hospital and that's like how their relationship was formed and then they just like stayed really close because he was just like always there and Mm -hmm. anyway um he like some mysterious stuff happens to him and she's basically come, she basically becomes completely consumed with figuring out what happened to her friend. And so the whole season is her trying to find out what happened to this good friend of hers. Um, and like also having to deal with being like blind while trying to solve this mystery. Um, and it's good. It's got a lot of twists and turns, a lot of things you don't see coming. Some things that are totally ridiculous. One thing that is, I find a little bit difficult to sort of square about it is that um, the lead actress is not actually blind, like, in real mm-hmm. life. Um, Ian read an article about it, uh, about the show and the casting process, and apparently they did audition a lot of people who were blind, but, excuse me, but they, you know, they they chose, I guess, the person they thought was, like, right for the character, And then she really committed herself to, to learning as much as she could about the blind experience in order to perform it. And she did, she does, to be fair, does do a really good job. Like you wouldn't know. We had to Google it to figure out if she was or not. But then another thing I wonder about is like, it does feel like there are a lot of things that, and I don't, I don't know, like, if there are blind people on the writing staff or not, but, like, it feels like there are there are things about the blind experience that an actual blind actor could bring to the role mm-hmm. that a sighted actor couldn't. Um, like, it, maybe if there's, like, issues in the writing, like, oh, that wouldn't happen because how would, how would I mm-hmm. see to do this or whatever? Like, mm-hmm. they might be able to point that out where she wouldn't necessarily, like, things like that. Like, I wonder if it might be a little bit more authentic. Um if it was, you know, I just don't know. I don't know, like, what right. what the blind experience is actually like. I've read some headlines that say that it, like, misses the mark in some ways on that. Mm. So, you know, the, it's it's tough because I, I like the lead actress. I think she does a really good job. Um, but I do find myself, like, wishing sometimes that uh, that she couldn't see. <laughs> 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 That's legit. Yeah. Not because I can tell, but just, you know. I know what you mean. I think it literally would be more authentic if she were blind. Yeah. Well, it's just like anytime you're watching, I guess like (laughs) 
anytime that you're watching like a show that's like it's showing you a particular job or whatever, like Ian and I have been watching these um these videos that are like experts reviewing the way that certain like shows or movies portray things. Like there was oh one God, was, like an I actual love that spy series. Yeah, yeah, spy videos. yeah, yeah. I love those. They're great. Yes. And like, so obviously from that, you can tell like most writers are not bothering to do a ton of research yeah. on exactly how every part of a job or a lifestyle is like lived, you know, like the, I was, t- did you guys watch the spy one? I was like really surprised uh, yeah. about how much alias got right. <laughs> yeah. Of the all the about- stuff. The one that was like the former head of disguise at the CIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. she did a few. She, she did. A did. Few. I think I've only she seen did. one of hers. She did like three different ones. They were I, all I great. I only saw the one about disguises. She was wonderful. And, Hannah, to that point, you know, actually, like I totally get that because the uh, lesbian romance series I read mm. are written by like a former doctor. She was like a, a surgeon, and mm. so whatever. There's like. Uh, they're frequently set in like hospital scenes and there's a lot of like hospital goings ons. Mm. And it's very comforting to me to know that like the things that are happening are literal things. Mm-hmm. Like, like I know that everything that's happening would really happen. I really mm. like that because even Molly had like Grey's Anatomy on recently yeah. and I was just like, well, is that realistic? Yeah. Like, I was totally <laughs> distracted by that yeah. because yeah. I was so used to like, Feeling that comfort of, like, knowing I could believe that right to be true. That's the thing of it. It's not that I wish that her blindness was more centered in the show because I really don't. Like, I think that the the, the fact that it is a show about a blind woman that isn't about, like, just about, like, her being blind. It's about, like, this whole other thing. And it's just part of the part of her character that she can't see. Like, I think that's all really great. But the thing about it is that when you can't trust the authenticity of it, it's distracting. (laughs) It's distracting. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. I feel like we're the type of media consumers these days who, like, are not just going to, like, take what is fed to us. We're a little (laughs) more, a little more like, okay, is this real? Yeah. A little bit picky. A little picky, a little. We want a little more of that authenticity. Yeah, we yeah. want proof. Authentic. We want receipt. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Authenticite. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But all that being said, in terms of obsessions, it's the we've been watching it all week. We come home and watch it. I feel like it's been. <laughs> I feel like it's been going on forever. I feel like we've been watching it for, for like a million episodes and every time that like every third episode the whole case gets like flipped upside down and wow. you just don't know anything anymore Kira sedgwick directed the eighth episode oh that's cool the closer herself i feel like i know exactly <laughs> i feel like i know exactly how this ep- this series got created it was like somebody was like wouldn't it be cool if there was a murder mystery about called in the dark <laughs> and the person trying to figure out was always in the dark but then they're also blind <laughs> so that works like for both things <laughs> and they were obviously st- stoned at that time <laughs> i did google um uh, halfway through like one of the episodes i googled what do blind people think of in the dark and I forgot to put quotes around the show name. And I, what I got back was like a lot of stuff about like, <laughs> what do they dream about? And what do they s- actually see? And all this stuff. And I was like, oh, this is, this is not right. This is way more philosophical than I meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys know who Marley Matlin is? Yeah. She was really great on the West Wing playing a deaf character. And she's actually deaf. Mm-hmm. Oh. Along those same lines, she's also the only deaf person to win an Oscar. She was also in the L Word. She was in the L Word. I've never seen the L Word, but um, I've seen West Wing. Ha, ha. Well, that's because you're not an L. Uh, right. Oh, that you're not allowed sense. to watch it. <laughs> I'm not a you're lizard. Not, <laughs> 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 but we already established that Hannah is kind of, is half lizard. <laughs> Snakes are half lizard. Breaking news. <laughs> She's by L lizard. By lizard. I have so to. She is allowed out. to watch the L word. The first time that I saw Marley Matlin, she was in something that I was 
that I was watching like in school. Um, and it was like I first semi- saw her in L word. <laughs> it was like semi educational. She was the first deaf person, actual L-word. deaf person I'd ever seen. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, she's still, I think, the only actual deaf person I've seen on, like, TV or movies, to be honest yeah. with you. What the fuck was it? It was, like, an educational, like, like short, like, miniseries or something. I watched it in school. I think it took place on a boat. She's in The Magicians? Excuse you? Excuse you. I just don't know how I'm ever going to find this. I just had, like, this wave of memories when you talked about her. Uh, I'm so sorry. Was it the Linguini incident? She's in that. It's <laughs> a funny name. It's educational, Ben. Yeah, it's educating you about the Linguini incident. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out off pod. This she is ridiculous. She was on Baby Einstein. No. <laughs> Sesame Street. She was on Sesame Street. No, this was she like was on Blue's Clues. High school or something. Yeah, Sesame was Street. The, was the L word? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was a different deaf actress then. Wow, good times. Chicken soup for the soul. I don't Isn't know. that? No. Is this good podcast? I'm trying, I'm <laughs> trying to help you, Hannah. Ben is being very helpful, Hannah, and I feel like you are not appreciating his help. Is it just Dancing with the know. Stars, Hannah? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. Is it the L word? <laughs> she was on yes. CSI. I love. Oh, CSI. you know what? It right. was the L word. <laughs> I oh knew it. Fucking god! How many times did Aaron have to say that? I found that to be very educational <laughs> in high school. <laughs> listen, we need to listen to lizards, Hannah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just googled Marley Matlin on a boat to try to figure it out. <laughs> Wow, how'd that turn out for you? Not great. <laughs> um, no, it's just nothing useful. Oh well. Yeah, that's that's it. In the dark. It's it's a good show. Uh what a sparkling recommendation. Thank you. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a good show. <laughs> just watch it. You'll like it. It's a great play on words. <laughs> At the very least. It's a good, there's good character. You know, the writing's pretty good. I wouldn't have stuck with it if the writing wasn't good, okay? That's good. Hey, yeah. Kira Sedgwick directed an episode, so. Yeah. The That's closer the closer herself. The closer herself. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I said that earlier. She was called The Closer. I know, I just. She was the chose closer. Chose to ignore it, and now, <laughs> now I feel like I can't ignore it anymore. I was just thinking about The Closer today. <laughs> Kira Sedgwick. I was listening to a, <laughs> I was listening to a podcast about like a cold case, and I was thinking about in the closer how she would like go back and interview all the. I never watched the, it. I don't even know what it's about. I believe it's about <laughs> cold cases. Then why did you bring her up? <laughs> because she directed an episode of the show Hannah's obsessed with, the closer <laughs> the herself. <laughs> It's but not. that made me feel like you have an emotional connection to her, Kevin Bacon's wife. <laughs> you mean um, it's, friggin' Kevin Bacon is Kira Sedgwick's husband? It's, yeah, you're right. it's not the one. <laughs> She's the fucking closer. <laughs> She's the fucking closer, Aaron. The closer herself. Care. Are you kidding you guys me? Don't watch the show. <laughs> Aaron, I don't have to watch it to know that she's the fucking closer. <laughs> she closes. Oh, God. I wish this topic would close. <laughs> we need to get Kira cl- Sedgwick in here. <laughs> she can't. She's directing. <laughs> I will close this topic by saying that I was wrong. It's not about cold cases. And I was thinking of a different show. You think about the show cases. Cold Cases. Who <laughs> <laughs> it's it's another mystery, Lost to the Ages. My brain is mush. <laughs> uh I believe somebody was on a boat on that show. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it in a school. <laughs> Educational. So. <laughs> um yeah, that's all I got. So thanks for watching that. 
We didn't watch it. Should, you're we, welcome. <laughs> should we do homework? <laughs> Please, yeah. Todd. Ben, what's your homework? My homework is look at the earthquakes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Hannah's, or sorry, not Hannah. Whoever runs the Twitter account, it's a mystery. Is going to link the <laughs> article with the with the with the post of when the episode goes up. You get it. Uh, yeah. Look at the look at those those giffies. They're crazy. They're nuts. Look at those photos. My Twitter is nicely proved. Ben, go there for pictures of my cats. They're very cute and sweet babies. Mm. That's it. Oh, I guess my Twitch is Disco Greg too. Haven't streamed in months, but yo, you know, Can we'll I see. On it? Maybe, maybe, maybe. I made it out of clay. <laughs> <laughs> Heron, That's what's your homework? Oh, sorry. Heron. Well, yeah, listen, listen to Conan O'Brien. He's a friend. It's a great podcast. Listen to Ben. My homework <laughs> is to listen to Ben. Listen okay? to Ben. Yes. Listen to Ben, is what I say. Listen okay. to my... men. Finally, we're going to start listening to white men. Oh, my God. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Never mind. You know what? I take, I take it all back. <laughs> uh, I take it back. Um, my Listen to Erin once she's already... She's approved my obsession is actually good. How about that? Yeah, how about that? There you go. <laughs> Only listen to Ben after I say yeah. it's okay, too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I give the go ahead and then do it. <laughs> well, I review lesbian movies, a lesbian movie reviews on Instagram. Haven't done that in forever, but it's up there. Nice. Um, I have a website, earnburn.com. There you go. Here I go. My ear really itches really bad. Ear, you itch. Yeah. Wow. Do you have to, like, stop everything to do that? Can you not talk and scratch? <laughs> well, the one headphone is not as good. Okay. Hi, I'm Hannah. Um, wow, it sounded like you were starting the podcast. <laughs> welcome to <laughs> the end of the podcast. Um, watch In the Dark on Netflix. Um, it's a fun mystery program. And my At Twitter least is- give it until episode eight, the one that Kira Cedric directed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she is the closer herself, so you might- Herself. You might have to close your watching after- that episode. Nice. I don't know what happens wow. in that episode. Sorry. What's your Twitter? Uh, I interrupted you. My Twitter and Instagram are both at Hanthropology. Um, my other podcast is called So Dreamy. We talk about dreams and sleep disturbances and stuff. Later, let's see. So in the month of September, no, what's the, what's the next month? August. August. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna wow. be um <laughs> we're gonna be doing daily dream drawings throughout the entire month um cool. like, as a as a form of journaling to try it out so we'll be like um doing that journey and if other people want to do that too basically we're just gonna like take notes on like scribble down notes if we wake up at night of like what we were just dreaming about and then try try to draw it the best we can in the morning like cool. our guest did did for a whole year Fran Heath. And do I have other things? No. And then our podcast has a voicemail. If you want to call us and tell us which Oreos are best, you can do that at 774-326-0420. Blaze it. it. Blaze, blaze it. it. Fucking blaze it. Fucking blaze it. Um, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at Two Broad Pod. You can follow us on Instagram at way too broad. You can email us if you have any questions, comments, encouragements, whatever, at way too broad at gmail.com. Um, you can find any of the stuff that we just talked about, links and all of that good stuff, um, at way too broad.com for anything you want, w or just earnben.com for anything you need. Um, did you mention the queer works map, Aaron? I didn't. You can. And Erin also has another project she's working on called Queer Works Map at QueerWorksMap.com. It's probably still just like a description of what it is on the yeah, website. Yeah, it's but coming along. I'm working on great. it. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be super cool and you should get in on the ground floor of it. Go visit and see what it's all about. And if you want to leave us a review, you can do that on Apple Podcasts. And please do um, because it would be super nice of you. 
So nice. So nice. That's it. That's all. I put my drink on the on the lid to the podcast candle. I keep on doing shit like that. Oh, you gotta stop. I know. The podcast candle is now extinguished. Goodbye. Good Bye. Night. It's the closer. Good night. <laughs> me, I'm the closer now. <laughs> yeah, I was the closer after all. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. I'm the closer. I'm the closer.